Hi there, this is Paul, the Mystic Guy. Thanks for tuning in. This is part two in a series as we look at the theme prompt editor and some customization work within Mystic. Starting off, I just want to go back to something we were looking at last time uh, when we made the first video, and that was that the creation of a secondary theme defaulted to the file name new and the description new. That's not overly helpful in the great scheme of things. And whilst the file name we could leave as new for now, I think it would be more helpful if we created a better description. So let's just create a, a description of, of this theme and we'll simply call it custom. And I'm doing that because when you're editing this theme, if for argument's sake you're into the menus side of things, just note at the top here the menu editor and in brackets it's actually saying the theme name, custom. Uh, likewise, it will just make a little bit more sense when we dig into how you can change to this particular theme as a user. So give it a description that makes sense. So what are we doing there today? I thought what we'd do would be to just find out a little bit more about where you can set some of the things up for the user in terms of how they interact with these themes, yet alone uh, all the different things you can do to customize things within a theme. And I found a few notes in the Mystic uh, What's On files, which I wanted to share with you. I'll just bring this on screen now. The first one is that the display files that are not found in a theme directory have this option to fall back to the default display file directory if that theme fallback is enabled. Now, that is just talking to this setting here, allow fallback. So I really wanted to just give you a bit more of a, a definition that I found as to what that's doing. So just to run through that again, if there are files that are not found in the theme directory that you're working in, and I'm presuming that are text files, menu files, or script files, then if this fallback is set to yes, it will try and default back to the default theme to find the files that are missing. There is a further note later in some of the what's new uh, records that say menus have a theme fallback option that's similar to the recent change to the display file system. These are quite old notes. This is going back to version 1.10. But again, the, the idea is that if a menu wasn't found in its theme directory and the option was enabled, then Mystic would in turn look for the default menu directory signaled or configured in the system configuration. So it's the idea is that you could have a number of similar display changes and then just build themes off the default. And if the, uh, the file wasn't in your theme, then it would fall back and grab the default theme. My belief is, and I stand to be corrected, but allow fallback is the key switch there that you need to enable if you want your user using this theme to be able to take advantage of your default menus if something isn't present in the theme that it should be. So moving on, I've made a few other notes too. How do we start to play with themes? Well, in general settings, you can define the theme that new users start with. It's called the start theme. And you can also define the theme the config editor uses. And I'll show you that now. So when you escape out of here a couple of times and you go across into configuration, general settings, you'll see on the screen here a start theme default. Now that's the theme that by in this case default, I hate to use the word, the um, users that sign up to the bulletin board are being assigned. And if you created a theme that you wanted to ensure that all your users when they first registered um, subscribe to out of the box then that's where you could set it so that everybody coming in and, and signing up was assigned to your new whizbang theme. You'll also note that there is a theme for system configuration. So this back end look and feel, you can also point to uh, how that should look. And in this case, it's going with the default theme. Personally, I wouldn't change that. Just note too that in the general settings, you can define the start menu that uses logging into your Mystic BBS begin with. So in this screen there is a start menu and if you haven't already explored this and we'll look at this in another video but here is the very first menu after they've put in their username and password that Mystic will take them to 
and the pre-login menu is actually a special one that has a number of things that you can add and remove. Uh, you may want to explore that at some stage at your own leisure but as I said we will make a video up. But let's say it wasn't that one and you wanted them to jump to a particular uh, menu then this is how you could define that. Also note that from an individual user point of view and that's what I've written here you can override this by editing their user account if you go into editors user and in this case we've just got one user which is uh, the system operator red72 on the second page if you use the page down key you can see here under theme uh, sorry start menu you we can define what the start menu is straight away so for argument's sake if you don't want to go through all the normal login stuff and you just want to jump straight to the main menu you might want to type main in here in which case each time red72 logs in the very first thing they're going to jump to is the main menu just something to be aware of if that's uh, empty then it's just going to go with the defaults that were set somewhere else no we won't save those changes righto what else have we got here? Also on themes there is an ask theme option in the login matrix settings. So if this is set to true Mystic is going to prompt the user to select a theme after the graphics are detected each time there's a connection. And I was thinking you know how do we if, if we do all this work setting up themes how do we actually give users the choice to uh, access them? So let's just explore this. For starters I'll just fire up a, a Mystic terminal and here I am and if I go red72 and I put my 1234 password in because I'm a system operator it prompts me with this invisible login prompt. If I say no, uh, in this case it's taking me straight to the main menu because that's how I've got things configured I think. Um, but if, if I wanted to um, choose which theme I was wanting to use well there doesn't seem instantly anything that I can choose off the out-of-the-box settings so there's a couple of ways in doing it and I'll show you both first is that if we go into that login matrix settings option you'll see here ask theme and that's set to no now if I set that to yes and escape out I think even just escaping out to this level may do the trick and then if I go back and log out of this session and fire up another login session for the bulletin board, read 72, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, after I get prompted yes and no, ah, it's made a liar out of me. Let me see if I just completely escape out of that. That may do the trick, I think. Yep, look at that. I've just fired it up and straight away it's um, asking me what theme. So even before I get to log in, at this point it's saying available themes and you'll see now that it's presenting me with instead of the title new I've got option 2, custom. So let's say I wanted to choose custom. Now I can log in, red72, 1234. And in this instance I'm actually now using that custom theme not that you'd know because there's been no major changes made. Now if you're actually logged in as a user and you want to change which theme you're using you can find that under account settings. I'll just show you some notes because I found this it was quite interesting. The GE menu option when you're editing a user's settings option 14 allows you to select the theme and I'll show you this in the menu side of things in a second. So in this case the author was suggesting that a theme file name might be called English so imagine themes could be Italian, English, Swiss and so on so you could have themes of menus and displays based around language. They don't have to be around language but in this case that was the suggestion. So you can see that there is a menu command called GE and then a data switch which allows you to firstly you have to put the 14 in which allows you to select a theme and then if you specified the theme name after that in the data line that would force automatically um, that theme to be selected. If you leave that out 
then it allows you to choose it. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go into the Mystic configuration, which I need to bring up on the screen. And under configuration, we go into the editors. We can go into menu editor, or we can go in through the theme prompt editor. I think this time I'll just go um, theme prompt editor. I'll go into my um, default theme and I'll go into menus and this is the account menu that allows you to change your various settings so I will just bring that up as well to show you so on the main screen here I know I'm logged into the other theme but it doesn't matter because they're both identical so what we're doing is we're looking at this section of the system now the one that you want to look at is the line called strangely enough language so I guess when it was uh, set up initially the author was thinking about how you could use theming for languages and if I look at the settings for this you can see that uh, again down here in the command side of things we're using a command called edit user settings the data switch is 14 and there is nothing further specified so that means over here when I'm using the system you can actually see it's got a title of language and it says the word custom so that's actually the name of the theme that we defined. So I guess your take out points from this are if you want to change themes as a logged in user you use option K and when you do that you can see it actually allows me to choose do I want the default or custom theme. The reality is the title language is a little bit misleading so what I think I might do while I'm here is press the tab key press enter on this display text and just edit this and we'll make that theme and if I escape out a couple of times and save that menu and then here if I quit from this menu and go back in oops I needed to add an extra space or two but you can see it's pretty straightforward to change isn't it so one two Nope, still not quite right. Add another one. That looks better. Save that. Quit out of here, go back in. And now you see it says K is theme and I can change my themes between the two. Wow, okay, there's a fair bit there to think about. I think at this stage I will stop and we'll carry on with another video shortly but that just gives you a quick feel for all the sorts of spaces that you can dive into with respect to Mystic when it comes to actually allowing a user to choose a theme yet alone what you're doing to actually customize the theme. Thank you for watching as always like the videos and if you like what you see and feel free to subscribe to the channel we'll be back with part three in the not too distant future. Until then bye for now.